Mike check. Hello. Hello, everybody. We got going on. I don't see anyone in the chat. Oh, my mom's here. Hello. Hello. I'll wait for two more guests in order to start. Oh, there we go. Oh, one more. Oh, Simon. Simon. Come on. One more person. Ah, I'll start now. Hey, what's going on, everybody? We are here with the... Oh, my gosh. Where's... Oh, it's so far away. Okay, I got it. I got it. Hey, the Kobo Clara 2E. Rakuten Kobo. Before we start... Oh, nice. Hello, Mom. Uh, before we start, funnily enough, no joke, right here... Yeah, I got a couple packages. We're going to do a little unboxing thing. So here's our first one. Again, if it's something I can't show you because it's bound by NDA or uh, we signed something, I'm not going to show you. But we'll sure see what it is. Oh, it's actually something uh, something for my son. That's not... Oh, wait. Oh, there's a couple things in here. Yeah. But this one is business related. And I can tell you that because look at this. Uh, I'm going to block out one thing real quick here. Well, actually, I'll cut it out. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So, I'm going to cut this part out just so we can show you. Look at that. Boom. Oh, it's beneath it, too. It's like several layers. <laughs> okay, I'll just rip off the copy. So, look who this is from, everybody. We got a package from Kobo Rakuten from Toronto. I have no idea was it what it is. It is absolutely sealed by UPS. I just ripped the label off. And it ain't the Cobo Clara 2 because they sent that to us uh, three days ago, I believe. So let's see what's in here because legitimately I have absolutely no idea. Actually, oh, Courtney, what's up? Hello. And Simon, yes, I think I said hi to you. Uh, how do you open these UPS boxes? Usually there's like a rip strip. Oh, here it is. I found it. <laughs> okay. There we go. What is this? Guys, this is exciting. Another bag! Alright, I always wanted a UPS bag. Wow, this is really well packaged. You don't need to put it in two bags like that. Come on. What's that? Oh, cool! Okay. Ha, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, that, <laughs> duh. So, Tolino is made by Rakuten. They now are made, physically made, not the operations of the company, are physically and tool, they're, 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 the structure of it all, the actual casing and everything, is made by Kobo Rakuten. So uh, Toronto, Ontario is the base of operations for Kobo Rakuten because they're a Canadian company. Well, Rakuten's Japanese, Kobo's Canadian. And uh, I guess they sent uh, one to us and uh, we're not gonna dwell too much on this, but this is the Sage the sage body oh i'm gonna save that for the unboxing because i don't want to open that cool all right so we're here with the Cobo clara 2e and why this is important why this is such an interesting unit is because it is made with 85 over over 85 percent recycled material for the actual body of the unit why is that important because you cannot just keep using up earth's resources because it is not finite it is not infinite the resources we have are finite so if you go to the factory and you're like hey i want to i want to make an e-reader and you're like okay go to the shelf and start assembly line five and grab a fresh spool of black number five and you get this fresh fresh polymer spool of black plastic and you're like, we, 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 and you, you make this. Oh, I turned, oh, no, it says don't press the power button. And you make things out of that, you know. You have to use recycled things. I understand clean, brand new plastic is actually cheaper than recycled plastic. It's true. It's actually cheaper than uh, going through the process and utilizing the um, resources to create something out of recycled plastic. But Kobo did it. So not only does this have... 85% plus of recycled plastic in it. There's no drawback to that. It, it doesn't look like it's all, you know, sandy and little chips and stuff. And the plastic itself is not any weaker or stronger than regular plastic. It's just simply recycled, which is really cool. So I think that's just an amazing idea. 
And Kobo is currently the only guys doing this. And I'm not sure what the E stands for. Um, they never told us if it's ecology, ecological, economy. So economical, we don't know because the Barnes and Noble for E stands for economical. It's the eco version, but not eco like ecology, eco like economy, AKA it's cheaper. This isn't necessarily cheaper. That's not what they're doing for. It's not a entry level. It's a recycled, ecologically friendly piece of tech. The box also, it's off camera, but uh, the box is 100% recycled, head to toe. It's printed with soy ink. It's just 100%, which is really cool. You got to have that because if you think, oh, it's not a big deal. It's only an e-reader. No, because you see this amount of plastic, you know, 100 grams or whatever. Multiply that by millions of e-readers. Multiply that by millions of e-readers that not just Kobo is making, but other companies should make. The tens of millions of Kindles that are out there. The, the Barnes and Nobles, the Onyxes, the Pocketbooks, the Tolinos, the everything should be doing what these guys are doing. It really does, you know? It's, uh, you know, how, how, how much of a corporate bigwig do you need to be and sit behind your, your desk and look at your bank account just going up and up and up. It's, come on, you know what I mean? Like, you just really got to just relax and think about the future rather than, you know, your yacht. If your yacht needs gas, so be it. But, you know, be nice in the process. Come on. So, I'm dwelling on the ecological properties of it because, honestly, it doesn't have anything else going for it and not in a bad way that's not what i mean what i mean is that they haven't done anything groundbreaking in this unit it's just 300 ppi it has books it has the shop you can sideload in manga you can sideload in pdf they haven't done anything that are like whoa look at this feature that no one else has done there really isn't anything it nothing at all it's just a kobo e-reader Hokey1021 says the new Kindle that is to be released in October is made of recycled plastic. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. We, we, okay, we're not being rude to, you know, any of these companies. We love all these companies. We really do. And we, we talk to these companies. But we did have a little bit of a larf around the, uh, the, the desk in the office because Amazon has never trailblazed or innovated anything. They really didn't. They weren't the first to do glow lights. They weren't the first to do audio. They weren't the first to do touchscreen. They weren't the first to do e-readers. Sony predated Kindle by four years before the Kindle even came out. Kindle has a tendency to sit back like this. They actually sit back like this. I don't know. And they're like, hey, what are they doing? Uh, I don't know. We'll see if it works. Hey, what are they doing? Oh, that works? Oh, let's do it. And then they do it. And more often than not, they do it better. <laughs> so they, they really do. It's like with the um, uh, all these touchy e readers that came out prior. You know, the Sony had a touchy e reader, and then Amazon is like, oh, sorry, there's like a hair that went in my mouth. It was like a little fluffy hair that went in my mouth from my shirt or something. Sorry, I didn't want to like lick my fingers and stuff. Um, Amazon is like, oh, everyone's doing touch, and now's the time to strike. And then they make a touch, and it works really well. And then they're like, mm hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, everyone's making asymmetrical kind of off, off centered, uh, bezel driven page turn button e-readers. Let's do that too. So they seem to jump in later and I think they know it. They're not slow to the, uh, what do you call it? They're not late to the game. They, they're Amazon. They just, they want to make sure something works because they know when they do it after they have made sure that it works, they can do it better. That's, if you don't believe me, look at literally every single release they've ever done. Nothing on it has innovated anything ever, short of maybe the Voyage with their haptic feedback buttons. And even then, it's a play off of just, you know, page turn buttons, except they just added a little vibration. So, uh, not this in Amazon, but this is all true. So, they see Barnes & Noble make an eco version. They see Kobo make an eco version. They're not not going to make an eco version because the big three, Barnes & Noble, Kobo, and Amazon, they don't work together, but they're all trading. They're all trading releases. They're all trading this and that and trying to undercut each other and outdo each other and this, that, and the other thing. So, yeah, Hokey, you're right. Of course they're going to do that. They're not not going to do that. Um, it was the same thing when everyone started. Just look at the history of everything. It's the same thing when they started all going bigger than six inches. Every single manufacturer now out of the big three have an e-reader that is greater than six inches, be it seven, be it eight, be it 
be it 6.8 they've all done it so that's really how it's going hokey is absolutely correct the new kindle that is coming out which we will compare this to will be made out of plastic recycled plastic we are going to be doing a comparison with this against the paperwhite 5 special edition and you might be asking why because they're kind of different but the reason is it's because as hokey said the new kindle isn't going to be released for another month and we want to really capitalize on this right now because it's here so this is going to be compared against the barnes and noble 4e and it's going to be compared against the kindle paperwhite 5 because those are the latest releases from the respective companies so that's what you're going to be seeing you're also going to be seeing some other stuff on this and why that is is because to be completely honest this has a couple things that are very interesting but only a couple that and really that's where it ends in the beta features you see web browser my words and you have large print mode and we're going to have a video that goes over all these what is that sketchpad unless kevin bossy's watching right now because that guy is the king of kobo i don't think a kobo device has ever had sketchpad other than of course the ellipsa and the um sage but those aren't sketch pads they're you know active capacitive note-taking e-readers this has a sketch pad and it's really good it's so fast i would have liked to see any sort of a drop down palette for example pocketbook has a sketch pad but they actually have line thicknesses line styles they have add text they have an eraser they have a clear all this doesn't have anything this has delete everything would you like to delete it yeah oh dang okay they have undo and they have redo and they have refresh and they have quit and save i mean those are all just fundamental features there's no features on this you can't sneak the top down or the the, the, the sides you know what i mean like give me some give me some pens or give me some thicknesses there's nothing absolutely devoid of anything and what you do is you go like that and you click save and you go save it saves as an svg which is a very obscure format then you go quit then you'll notice it's not even in its own folder it's under books like le legitimately and actually i didn't check yet can you filter that no it's not even you can't even filter under like you know sketches it's just books so why is it under books and look it's there's my other sketch i did the other day and it's hey oh mike you're here i thought you were uh i thought you were out of a commission for um today but hello um yeah here it is and you know what's funny when you open it back up you can't edit it it's now saved as like a stamped image so there's nothing you can do to actually go back and change it you can just like move it around so unfortunately it's kind of weird I, I suppose pardon me one <coughs> sorry had uh, i actually forgot to usually before i do the lives i like to like you know cough it out get ready you know but i actually it was um it was quite busy so i had to rush here and I was in shambles this morning getting ready. But yeah, um, yeah, it's very strange because it's just this weird like, hey, Chad, what's up? And BL, hold on, I'll get you get right to you. Oh, and Mike says tomorrow. Okay, yeah, Mike's going to be uh, doing some stuff tomorrow. So he's um, taking care of some business. So he's here today with us. Hello, Mike. And Elliot Price, hello. Yeah, so if you revive your SVG files, you actually can't edit it again. So why wouldn't, I mean... You know, easier said than done. I mean, they're Kobo, I'm not. But why wouldn't you just la add an edit key? Like, somewhere where you can edit it. Unless I'm completely wrong, but I've already clicked on everything during when we were going over this at the table read, or table test. Yeah, you can't actually, like, edit it. It's just, you know what I mean? It's just there, and it's stamped, and it's one and done. It's a very strange feature. And, um... It's really the only thing that this does that the other guys don't. And uh, if you guys are just joining us, because I see people filtering in now, funneling in now, this is made out of 85% recycled plastic, more so than. Um, so, like, there's nothing else that this really does that breaks ground outside of those facts that it's made out of, like, DVDs and, you know, uh, CDs and, and plastic bottles, which is really cool. So it's um, and and even them on their website. If you look at their if you look at their promotional material, it's all just like ecological this this this, and they have like some peripheral cases and stuff like that. But it it really doesn't do anything else. 
it's waterproof, sure, but you know what I mean? They, they haven't had any, like, innovative features on this outside of that sketch, really. And I understand it has a Carta 1200 screen, so that's, like, super, uh, really good selling point. Although, I must say, they're a little bit late to the game on the Carta game, because Carta's been employed for quite some time, and Fujitsu's employed Carta on the second gen Quaderno, and that's, like, a while back. I know the screen sizes are different, I'm just saying. The technology, they're a little bit late to the game doing the whole Carta thing. I guess they were waiting for a release like this, but that's what's going on there. It is a very basic e-reader, and that's what it's supposed to be, you know, it's it's entry level, and it's, uh, I think, $129 from Kobo, and if you're unable to get it, we can help you get it, obviously, we uh, charge a little bit more, because people in Singapore, and, you know, Lithuania, and uh, Luxembourg, and stuff like that, they can't get these, so we assist them in that, but uh, really, yeah, it's just a basic e-reader, but I must say, 6-inch screen, plus the um, 300 PPI, gives you a very dense, very dense experience which means it's very clear and if you notice it's not flush screen and bezel like a sage and there's no emr layer or wacom layer and there's no glass layer and there's no screen protector on the glass and if you've seen our teardown video those are all physical things i mean go like this they're physical things that are on top of the emr uh, of the epd the electronic paper display so if you picture it like that that's the epd you're actually putting more things on top. It's real. You're going sealant layer, Wacom digitizer with the flex cable, and then you're going, and the piece of glass, and the protectant on top. You're really doing that. So for this to be a sunken screen and bezel, it looks so good. I'm not even joking, man. Like the, A lot of the times when you see these devices, you can actually tell how far they are away from your eyes, how, how far the actual EPD layer is. But this one is so close to your to the screen level, to the surface level, you're like, my goodness, that's that's right up there. And despite what people say, no, a sunken screen and bezel is not an exposed e-ink screen. That's not how it works. There are so many layers on top of this, even with this. There's the EPD, there's the layer they bake on top from factory, and then there's the gel layer with all the LEDs stuck into it. That's a layer of gel. And then they put a top coat sealant on it. So it's not an exposed screen. You're not scratching the EPD. That's not what's happening here. Let's get some questions here. Bell says, new Kindle won't have, oh, won't have blue light filter. Do you think it's more important to read night and sleep after blue light filter e-readers never need a blue light filter because they don't have blue lights emitting from the pixels because the pixels don't have color nor are they backlit are you talking about the lack of a warm light set of leds i'm not sure what you're talking about please hit me up again i'm curious to see how kobo is dealing with overdrive disappearance are the incorporating libby into kobo mike's here defending Defending us, man. Overdrive isn't disappearing, as he says. Hokey1021, uh, uh, that's the same guy. I received a notice that Overdrive's app is being discontinued. Only Libby app now. Um, sure, Michael spearheads the um, uh, the top-end business operations of Goody Reader and does the um, news publication and everything, so he'll chime in and, and help you out there. Uh, Elliot Price. The design looks more rounded than the HD. Yeah. yeah the bottom is more rounded. Uh, here, let's go like this. Get off camera here. Well, I need some yaw. There we go. The top corners are more squared. They are still rounded. The bottom corners are very rounded compared to the top. I would say like 20% more rounded. And that's because when you have it in your hand, it's nicer to hold. If you have it in your hand like that, it's instantly more jagged. I haven't done that till right now. It's instantly more jagged. You're not going to be like, oh man, this is the worst thing ever because it's squared. No, it's, it's, our job is to nitpick and be particular. But, that's better. It does feel better. If you compare the two, actually. Yeah. And you know what I like about this backing? If you notice, the backing has this... Let's get some light. Oh my... There we go. Oh, okay, come on. There we go. Now we're playing. See that? It's got this nice, like... Watch the review video. We do some close-ups. Um, It's got this nice wavy texture to it. Oh, it's so cool. It's like the ocean waves, you know? Symbolizing the, the plastics that go into the ocean that they're diverting into this. Because, yeah, this is also made with 10% ocean-bound plastic, which is like the stuff that's just going to go into the ocean. So, bound for the ocean. Yeah, it's really nice because also it's textured as the plastic composition itself. Plus, it has all these little perforated, you know, indentations of the wave. So, there's like no fingerprinting on this. And it's super high grip. 
it's quite it's quite grippy so yeah uh i got some more questions here no i mean smart light sorry warm light uh, I honestly haven't looked into the new Kindle. I don't know if it has warm light or not, but it is a basic and basics usually don't have warm light. So, um, you know what the thing about Amazon also does is they overlap their own properties. So they used to have the basic that had no touch, right? And then they had the touch and then the basic started to have touch. So you're like, okay. And then the basic had, um, no glow light and the paper white had glow light. And now the paper white, and the basic both have glow lights. So they start to just catch up with each other to the point where it's like, oh, they're all the same. And for the most part, a lot of them do overlap. They really do. So um, yeah, possibly could have, uh, I, I don't think it has warm light. I wouldn't think it would because if it had touch, warm and cool light, why would you buy a paper white? It, like not the signature. The signature has a light sensor. It has wireless charging, all that stuff. But why would you buy a regular paper white at that point? Bigger screen, sure, now, but before they were both six inches. I uh, received a notice at Overdrive. Oh, I just said that. Bell, Biel, is it more fragile with more layers or less? No, actually, oh, you're, you're asking me in general. Typically, things with more layers, there's more things that can go wrong. Because if you have an EMR layer or a Wacom layer, note-taking layer, and that fails, can't do note-taking anymore. And that could affect the operation of the rest of the unit. Typically, we found... I hate to say it, but we used to do drop tests. Uh, we don't do it anymore. We give stuff away. We're not going to break stuff anymore. Uh, typically, e-readers that have just a regular sunken screen and bezel and just plastic and six inches like this, they're so indestructible, man. I'm not... They're so hard to break. I would say with le less is more. Yeah, less layers, in, in my experience, has been more... Uh, less layers, less fragile. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Elliot Price, I really like the Claire. I miss the tiny e-readers. The Kobo Mini reminds me a lot of that. Yeah, they're never going to bring that back. Uh, we've talked to them. We've had a couple FCC applications from them that are like, oh, we're making something. No, it's not a Mini. They're never going to bring it back. They brought it back for a short stint, I think 2014. And we actually got a bunch of them for like $18 at bestbuy.ca, seriously. And then we're just never, it's all uh, It's all gone. La via, la vie. Is the back easy to scratch? No, the front is. The back is not easy to scratch at all. It's this super... Uh, I don't even know what you call it. It's like... It's textured. It's like gritty like sandpaper, but it doesn't feel like it. It feels very... Mm, not smooth, but it kind of feels like... An, I don't know if you guys know, but like an old xbox controller where you touch it it's kind of sweaty on your fingers pardon me um it's like they did something with the back that prevents fingerprinting it, it must be like the the absolute over texturedness of it is that it doesn't really leave any fingerprints and it's really it's, just, it's not a easy to scratch the front in just a small review it's not scratched but you get those it's not like the paint is chipped off. That's not what's going on. It's more like... Oh, it's impossible to show on a webcam. But we've noticed that the front shows like hairlines. Not this, the actual bezel. More than the back does. Because it's just a different texture. It's like a flat matte black. I feel like they didn't put a clear coat on it. I don't know. No, but if you're asking me, yeah, the back is uh, not easy to scratch. And the front kind of is. BL, okay, thanks. Should be less fragile than a paperweight in theory. Uh, yeah, in theory, sure. I mean, you know, unless you just bend this over your knee to test, sure. But uh, e-readers don't go out in the field. Phones go out in the field. You're taking photos. You're going like this with Pokemon Go. You're you're like you know you're you're playing games. That's considered like you know more extreme use you take it outside you take it into the field people use it for like you know they do insta videos and stuff and they run with it and they do lives that's way more used than this that's the extent of how you're going to use this you know what i mean it's so unlikely that every anything extreme is ever going to happen to this why was that so slow like seriously did you see that that did not happen in the review that was really weird and we showed off pinch and zooming in the review 
Maybe that needs a refresh. Dang. Uh, can you confirm on the AZ? Oh, can confirm on the AZ website. Doesn't have warm light. Thank you, Elliot. Oh, there you go. Doesn't have warm light. So that makes sense. Because if it had warm light, again, this, the, the paper white is now 6.8. But just hypothetically, if they were both 6, you had the, the basic and the paper white, both 6, both warm light, both touch screen. Like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Why would you do that? So it almost they almost gave themselves an out that they could have had warm light now because the selling point would still be that the paper white is 6.8 and that they had a signature edition variant. So you could have had warm light and still gotten away with it. But yeah, Amazon, man, they're, they're funny guys. They really are. Yeah. Elliot, everything has USB-C now. Um, does the Y Ben have USB micro? I can't remember. And someone was saying the Kobo mini and, um, Really, the only mini e-reader out right now. You know, Hisense has an e-reader, sure. It's not mini anymore. It's 6.7. That's big, <laughs> now that I think about it. It's its ratio was different. It's elongated, so, yeah. Oh, E-N-G... Jalili. Jalili, what's up? Um, oh, BL says, so no Amazon 6-inch with warm light? Nope, not anymore. Except a paper white... Paperweight 4 have warm light? The Oasis has warm light, but that's, six, that's 7. Paperweight 4 have warm light? I think it did. Someone confirm. Um, oh, yeah, the Oasis. What a joke. That's that's something. Uh, Amazon's done a couple things that were just strange. Um, the, uh, what do you call The Oasis 3 is actually four four years old now because the oasis 3 is based off of the oasis 2 which was released in 2018 2019 the oasis 3 came out but all it has was a fresh coat of paint which is like rose gold in select markets and it had a warm light but that was it and it was expensive in canada that thing I, today if you were to buy a 32 gigabyte lte um uh, what do you call it? uh Oasis 3 it's still going to be like $330. Uh Dull and Worm Xiaomi has a small Xiaomi has a small one. Yes, but I was talking about e-readers not like phone things. So the ones that don't really look like phones, Hisense has the 5.84 inch touch touch light, still kind of like a phone. Xiaomi has the Ink Palms which are actually getting big now. They're no longer sub 6 inches. They're actually the Ink Palm 3 is is bigger. There you go. Viva, uh, La Viva, thank you very much. The Paperweight 4 doesn't have warm light. So there you go. No 6 inch Amazons with warm light. So you got that, like the big chunky dunker, the uh, the paperweight uh, five and the signature edition. So the bigger guys, um, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. So small e readers, man. I would love to see just a small e reader, just a five inch ebook reader that doesn't look like a gosh darn smartphone. It doesn't look like a smartphone. Oh, there's the WeChat phone. Yeah, well, you can use anything as an e-reader. You can literally get any single e-paper device. I can put... I put e-books on the smart home remote from Sony. The one that you control your air conditioner and your refrigerator and your rice cooker. That one. It's an e-ink screen. It's like four inches. You put e-books on it. I put e-books on it for the review. Go check the YouTube channel. I put PDFs and manga on it. So you can use anything as an e-book reader, but I'm talking about an e-book reader, like a device. I would love to see a five inch, not a phone, not one with communicative technic telecommunication specif uh, specs and earpieces like, oh, hello, put your SIM card in it. No, I'm talking about an e-ink reader. That'd be cool. It really would. I'm serious. Yeah, I mentioned the Y Ben. The Y Ben is, <laughs> oh, the Y Ben. What a, mm. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. No, it's okay. It's it was made with good intentions, I'll say. But the thing is that when you're a company that makes literally, I don't know, four e-ink devices, and you just make it yourselves. We covered this in an OEM video where we mentioned going with uh, OEMs or making stuff yourself, becoming your own OEM. It's expensive, so like you can get basics a pocketbook basics and touch lux threes and basic lux threes and touch lux fours for cheaper than that of the y ben the y ben does nothing you click those buttons uh, clicky clicky click you hear that two blocks away 
over the traffic in a cement factory, those buttons, man. It's crazy. It does give you tactile feel, and it is back to basics. It's kind of nice in a way, but it's kind of nice in a way for $17 like a texture beagle. It's not kind of nice in a way like 99 USD. No, you're losing the point of why you're making it. You don't go, oh, we're going to go back to basics. No Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth, clicky, clicky buttons, small screen. And you're like, oh, this is great. Let's do it. Yeah, it's 139 bucks. Oh, wait, wait what? Oh, okay, yeah, but we'll, 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 we'll get the price lower. Okay, yeah, you scared me. It's going to be 20 bucks, right? No, man, it's going to be $99. And it's like, oh, you missed the mark. And I understand in this world of, you know, chip shortages and logistics issues and, and, and stock shortages, there's a lot that you know, goes into making something like that. By the way, I'm just ramping, uh, vamping here because no one's asking any questions about this. So until you stop me, I'm just talking. Yeah, so I understand that it is more expensive than, you know, going with Amazon that subsidizes the crap out of their device. Amazon is so cheap. You can get Amazon devices for like $14 on Woot. It's a real thing. Because when you get it, they sell you ebooks and audiobooks and subscriptions and 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 um, registrations and like you know packages and memberships and all this other crap. So they actually get hundreds of dollars of value out of you for just having their thing, utilizing it as a vessel. Kobo is a little bit of a middle ground. They try to make a little bit of money on the unit itself, and then they sell you the services. But Amazon's just service central, man. Uh, Elliot Price, oh my God, the Texture Beagle. I thought the Texture Beagle was a good idea with failed execution the company itself wasn't good to deal with we weren't wasn't very comfortable to deal with them um it was a good idea that it had no wi-fi and no i don't even think it had a usb port you needed to bluetooth everything over to it kind of interesting didn't last read by fred or read by fred probably read now that i read it uh, do you know why they decided to move the power button to the bottom you mean the Amazon? Power button's not on the bottom on this. The power button on the Kindle Signature Edition 5 is at the bottom and the 5, which is really bad because every time you just, oh, I'm just going to put it down, boom, it just turns off. I'm serious. One time, we had our uh, Signature Edition leaning up against something. I think it, it was even like that. It was leaning up against something. And it was just rebooting and refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. And we were just like, why is that thing re rebooting so much? And we just went like this. We moved it away from where the power button was touching and we're like oh it was lean it was leaning on the power button so it was doing all these hard resets yeah um no it's not at the bottom there's nothing on the bottom just the ipx rating and the USB C. so that's that's a good idea that they put it on the back and they recessed it you can't touch it in fact when this live started i was trying to press the power button it was further recessed than i thought i wasn't even pressing it that's how recessed it is so they really did just put it out of the way. I love that. Didn't the texture come in like a milk carton? <laughs> I can't remember. I think that'd be pretty funny. I would love to see more manufacturers play with uh, boxes. The companies that really play with boxes, only a handful. No one plays with boxes. Um, Big Me does some nice stuff with boxes. You know who actually does the best box in the game right now? iFlyTech. That box was insane so nice and i guess the one-off high sense touch museum edition the nanshang museum edition pronunciation um they did a cool box but not a lot of people do boxes man i mean i understand they're trying to be eco but you can print everything out of recycled paper and use soy ink and still make a badass box no one does boxes anymore i'd love to see some boxes i know cutting down on waste but at the same point if you do it uh, um, uh, 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 maturely or you know uh, conscientiously then you should be good La Via is this Clara 2 a good option compared to Libra 2 if you're not into buttons yeah it's great it's Carta 1200 screen 300 PPI uh, IPX waterproof rating uh, made in Taiwan it's a great package it really is and it's a better choice to go with something that's them making a conscious effort to reduce waste it really is what is that something in there those are the lights there's something in there oh it's like some adhesive again you know technical nitpicky stuff we're like oh, according to my calculations but if you if you tilt this 
and it's impossible to show you guys on camera but if you tilt this and you look at about a millimeter deep between where the bezel sandwiches with the screen itself you'll actually see two globs of uh adhesive that's crazy and they're asymmetrical they're not they're not like you know one in the center one on the edge they're just like here and here really weird and i can't pick them out and they're very deep and we've only used this one day in studio so i and we just took the screen protector off yesterday and we don't have gooby hand people here eating doritos playing games at night so i was very interesting it's out of the way it doesn't encroach on the screen but it is there interesting does it have uneven lighting no jessica fam uh no <laughs> this has very good lighting uh it's daytime as as you know what here so i'm not gonna be able to show you oh good it's auto adjust lights have peaked at around 2016 2017 no problem with lighting ever since they stopped illuminating the screen and they went with a layer of gel like this that has leds built into it that shoot into the layer like that and illuminates i'm being very gentle by the way illuminates it like that ever since they started doing that and stopped doing front light technically there's no more front light it's a layer and there's leds on the side and it, it illuminates the gel layer it's like you shining a gl uh, 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 your cell phone light into like you know a glass and it just goes like you know what i mean like that i remember the e-readers with glow light oh my god elliot go back and look at the simple touch nook with glow light review we did holy santa claus poo man did you see that it's like it's like, oh, if you compare it, it's like a, a blue s smudge on your screen. It's like, and that's it. And you're like, <laughs> and at the time, I'm turn my light on. At the time, you're like, oh, this is great. I can read at night. And now you look at it and you look back. My goodness, it was bad. Awful in caps, the way you wrote it, it does not justify how bad it was. You were right. Oh, man. Jada Johnson, I try so hard to support Amazon, but I go, oh. I try hard not to support Amazon, but I go back to the Paperwhite 5 because it's cheaper and easier to buy books. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, Don't judge a company by some bad PR. For example, I understand the Amazon game has a lot of negativity around the warehouse working and this, that, and the other thing, but... A lot of the other divisions do very good things like, you know, online image hosting and security and, you know, website hosting and stuff like that. That's really good. And it's cloud and it's green and it's eco. I know it takes electricity to make cloud servers and stuff, but still, you know what I mean? They do that kind of good stuff. And then they have this warehouse thing that just brings the PR down. It's like, oh, you know, the, the workers can't even go to the washroom and stuff like that. Same with every company. Same with us. We do these amazing reviews and, and you know, we, we release our own e-readers and we, we do these like, you know, these crazy news pieces and we get invited to like, you know, to hang out with Sony at trade shows. And then sometimes people don't get their stuff on time because shipping is slow and they're like, oh, good e-readers, terrible because they didn't ship my thing. It's like, well, we did. It just took long to get to you. And, um the bad PR doesn't weigh outweigh the good things that we do. So you really just can't say, I don't want to support Amazon because it's one thing. And we're not partnered with Amazon. They don't pay me to say that. I'm just saying. It's kind of like saying, you know, just in general, oh, McDonald's is crap. Well, it's like, well, do you know everything about what they do? And again, I don't, I'm not, you know, advocate for McDonald's, but they do those, you know, Ronald McDonald drives across the country where they get all this money and they donate it. So, you know what I mean? It's like, take the bad with the good, but don't just take one thing that's, repeated on your facebook feed and be like oh they're, they're crap it's like well you know maybe do some studying and look at their financials and look what they do and look at their humanitarian stuff again mcdonald's and amazon I'm not saying they do where they don't i'm just saying in general you know look before you leave my pia rs 900 had the worm light yes it did yeah i had to aim like an old game boy <laughs> oh man remember you put it into the exe or ext port on the side of your game boy and you you worm it over and you're like this is the future anyways we're done here guys thank you so much for asking two questions about the code i thought people would be lining up to see this live today you guys didn't ask anything about this but that's fine we're here to chat we're here to we're, we're here for you basically we take this time 
that we're just chatting and la la la. And if you guys say something, hey, I want to see this, we show you. Unedited, unscripted, boom, top down camera. We will show you exactly what you ask about this. We've been doing this for 40 minutes. And obviously that point has been lost on you guys because nobody asked any questions. But we're doing a lot of comparisons on this. We're going to be doing the beta features. We're, hey, mom, thank you. We're going to be doing the uh, 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 overdrive. Still no TTS. Now you ask a question, dull and worn, right at the 41 minute mark. Come on, man. I actually don't know. They do have audio capabilities. Oh, let me turn that glow light off. Mm -hmm. Oh, missed it. Missed it, missed it, missed it, missed it. There it is. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know if that TTS. It has audio book capabilities because it has Bluetooth. I'm not going to connect a Bluetooth speaker right now, but we'll check at least if it has TTS. Uh, I don't think so. You know what? We'll do some digging because remember everybody, Amazon has secret TTS. If you turn on accessibility mode, and then you connect it to a wireless speaker or headphones, you actually get the TTS, the entire thing read to you very well, actually, I must say, with a good voice. Because it's like for blind people, you know, that have accessibility problems. So, yeah. Now you guys are asking all these questions. Um, Andrew Sutherland, thoughts on Remarkable 2 for university students? Stay away from Remarkable. Don't touch them. I'm not dissing on Remarkable, but don't do it, man. You're getting a device that has zero features, and the features it does have, you have to pay for. And once you pay monthly to get those features, which they took away from you, they actually have to pay to get them back. They've actually held the features that the Remarkable inherently has as hostage until you add your credit card. It's true. And then once you get all these features, you're still 10% of what you would have gotten on an Onyx, on what you would have gotten on a Big Me, on a Me Book, on a Boyu. Don't touch Remarkable. I'm not even joking, guys. Seriously. If you have one, that's great. If you're grandfathered in, that's awesome. Now, don't buy it. I've watched you guys for like 10 years. The best e-reader coverage and shop ever. Thank you very much, Elliot. Yeah. Um, you know, just because we ship something now, and we don't even do shipping here. We do some shipping in Japan, but most of it comes from our Canadian operations and our Chicago operations uh, and our Hong Kong operations. So just because something takes 14 days to get to you because you chose a mail service um, doesn't mean, you know, we should get pegged with the negativity but we don't care we care about the customers i'm just saying we don't care because you know there's always gonna be negativity online someone said about our lives oh you should just stop talking and show the device and i'm just like yeah it's a good idea if you guys ask any questions about it but you're not you're asking all these other questions so yeah um i'll answer a couple more here you guys just chimed in at the last minute here look into the super note x series uh dull and worn i would disagree with you again uh do not buy super note at all again not against Supernote, but Supernote has limited functionality. They have Android, but they don't let you use it. There's no glow light. There's no audio. The things are rather expensive, and the pens are very expensive, and the replacement tips for the pens are even more expensive. It's like $60 for replacement tips. Do not buy Supernote. They are underachieving, very underperforming units. Again, we deal with everyone in the industry. 39-plus manufacturers we deal with. Companies you guys haven't even heard, heard of. Crokey and King Jim and Freno. Don't buy Supernote. They're long in the tooth. They are really, really out of the game. They really are. Please look at the other manufacturers. Look at MeBook. Look at On Onyx has the best device lineup, period. Big Me's a close second because they're coming up. They released a ton of units all at once. They have a sub-fighter brand called Goyue. Uh, look at the Hanvon N10. There's a lot out there. Don't buy Supernote. Don't buy Remarkable. Please don't do it. You trust me. I, I'm not I can't cook. I can't sew a patch on a on a shirt, but I know e-readers. I can repair I can build an engine and I know e-readers and video games. <laughs> trust me. I'm being completely honest. I'm unbiased. We don't have we don't have collaborations with any company to tell us what to say in like preferential treatment. We we collaborate with Barnes and Noble for videos. We collaborate with Big Me for device releases, but believe me when I say Companies like, you know, the old stuff like the Texture Beagle, the Entourage, Energy System, if you see an old one on eBay. And the current stuff, Remarkable and Supernote, don't buy it. Don't buy it. The e-reader industry is more robust now than it has ever been in the history of e-paper. Right now. The amount of choices, it's unfathomable. I am learning about new companies 
every week. Me. <laughs> New companies come across the desk. We get blind shipments from people. Blind shipments without anything. Look at this new e-reader. I'm like, who are you? And then we open it. We got a color device. I didn't even know anyone else was making color outside of the guys that have already made it because no one has touched color in like nine months. And suddenly a week ago when we did our unboxing e-paper episode, we got a color six inch children's e-reader. Where did that come from? E-Ink didn't even know what that was. They're like, what is that? Because E-Ink sells the panels. They don't collaborate with everyone for like the development of the products. That's up to each individual manufacturer. And this color e-reader landed and they're like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> We're like, that's crazy, man. So don't buy Remarkable and Supernote and Energy System and Icarus and all these old brands. Don't do it. Trust me. There's so much out there. You're really just beating an old horse when you could buy a, a new... I don't know, Doberman. I don't know any phrases when it... What's the opposite of beating an old horse? What's like the, 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 the you know, the answer to that? Anyways, thanks guys so much. Yeah, the, the Mi Book P78 is great. Crazy value. Crazy value. The P10's even better. 330 bucks for a 10-inch note-taking device with Google Play. Why would you buy a Remarkable? Why would you buy... A super note when I'm saying words coming out of my mouth like this. Thanks guys so much. I gotta go. This is it's exciting. I love talking to you guys. You guys are so good. Oh, I gotta do my thanks. I like saying thank you to everyone. We are not above or beneath anyone else. Courtney, Nicholas. Oh, I was thinking of getting an e-reader from Manga narrowed it down to Kindle Paper. Why would you recommend eight or thirty-two gig or the Libra two? Oh manga? Damn it, Nicholas. Damn you, Nicholas. Uh, I don't know. Bye, guys. No, um, that's a tough one. I like the physical page turns of the Libra. I would say maybe the paperweight is faster by a smidgen, a smidgen pigeon faster than the Libra too. Mm, that's a tough question, man. Um, okay. I'm going to I'm going to reverse the balls in my court thing and put the ball back in your court and then run away. Um if you like physical page turn buttons, get the Libra. If you don't, get the Kindle. Okay, I'm not looking at yours anymore. Um what we got here. Uh thank you Andrew. Very very nice of you to uh stop by. Uh Elliot, Courtney Bowman, the the legacy people here. Ian J J Jalili, I'm sorry I can't say your name very well. Oh, how is Zalmi for note taking and sketching? uh what zaomi like the the w7 w7 is really good actually it's quite nice yeah yeah look at the zaomi w7 check that one out seriously andrew i may have said hi dull and warren yep uh thank you for your comments biele la vie la vie thank you very much uh my mom for stopping by who else we got zoe laird is this only compatible with kobo Co books nope sorry zoe i'm completely saw i missed that you can sideload in anything you want Side load in anything you want. Boom. Jessica Pham. Jada Jansen. Jada Jansen. Red by Fred. Hokey 1021. Try not to double up on the names here. Elliot? Damn it. I said yes. I mean, you said hi. Mike? Chad? Simon? And probably Kevin watching. Mama, go get pizza. Oh, man. I want pizza. Man, oh, Dull and Warren, you've been watching Toge Trial? Jeez. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, I fix cars and stuff just on the side. And we actually do have another YouTube channel. Um, I mean, I do. It's not Goody Reader. Completely separate. Just completely personal, separate thing. It's on YouTube if you want to see me repair some cars and stuff like that. It's called Toge Trial. Um, I don't have any, like, merch <laughs> or, like, you know, logos to drop. But, yeah, check it out, everybody. Thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Stop by next week. Every single week we're here. Bye-bye.